Now, by the way, uh, who is Dhul Qarnayn? Dhul Qarnayn is an enigmatic figure, and uh, most of our some of our medieval commentators, and then especially uh, the most famous translator of the Quran of the previous uh, century, Abdullah Yusuf Ali, uh, whose impact in the translation was well known. All of us who grew up in the 70s, 80s, 90s, we know Abdullah Yusuf Ali's translation as being the one that had the most impact, even though, long story, but uh, it wasn't very accurate. Number one, number two, can you believe this is a completely tangent? Abdullah Yusuf Ali couldn't speak Arabic properly. There's another point, he plagiarized it, but that's a whole different story, not related to our. Uh, topic here. Nonetheless, yani his translation went viral. And in his translation, in his commentary, he mentions that Dhul Qarnayn is, who does he mention? Alexander. All of you know this, okay? He mentioned Dhul Qarnayn is Alexander the Great. And it kind of spread amongst the masses. And this is what happens, subhanAllah, how thoughts spread, even if they're incorrect. And so many people thought Dhul Qarnayn is Alexander, but this is really almost 100% wrong for many reasons. Most obviously is that we know a lot about Alexander the Great. We know a lot about him. And he was not a believer in Allah. He was a pagan. He worshipped the idols. And Allah praises Dhul Qarnayn as being a worshipper. And Allah praises Dhul Qarnayn as being a righteous person. And Allah never praises paganism. And Allah never praises someone in this manner. And Allah Azza wa Jal mentions Dhul Qarnayn says, قَالَ هَذَا رَحْمَةٌ مِّن رَبِّي so Alexander, really almost impossible. Uh, some modern commentators have said that it is the, uh, the Persian King Cyrus, uh, King Cyrus who ruled from around 600 to 530 BC. So we're talking about 2,600 years ago, the Persian King Cyrus. And Cyrus, they say he's a candidate because he ruled over perhaps the largest empire the world has ever seen, or maybe the second or third largest. You know, there have been this massive empires. Alexander the Great probably did rule over the most largest empire, but temporarily. The Muslims, by the way, ruled over the largest for the longest period of time. But that's a different thing. Alexander, for a period of time, had more, but it fizzled out with his death. The benefit or the beauty of Islam is that wherever the Muslims went, Islam remained. And Islam and the Muslim civilization was the largest, but it wasn't unified uh, as solid, if you like, as it was under Alexander. So they say Cyrus. But firstly, there are a number of things that don't match up. And secondly, once again, Cyrus was a clear-cut pagan. There is a third theory that I personally am very sympathetic to. But these are just theories in the end of the day. If you don't like it or you like it, it doesn't matter. It's just my opinion or the opinion of some modern scholars. If Dhul Qarnayn were a historic figure, what do I mean by historic? I mean somebody whom we know. Because it is always possible that Dhul Qarnayn is pre-history pre-recorded history, because recorded history begins around 4,000 years ago. Before that, we don't really have records. Before that, it's just unknown. It's a big black box. Perhaps Dhul Qarnayn is of that time frame. Allah knows. As for recorded history, it goes back around 4,000, roughly 4,000 years or a bit more than that. And we know pretty much all of the massive empires and the great kings of that time frame. If Dhul Qarnayn was one of the kings of this era, then we should know about him in terms of recorded history. Humanity would have known of these types of great kings who have conquered large swaths of the earth. So another candidate is the Persian Emperor Darius. The Persian Emperor Darius, who ruled 550 to 486 uh, BC. And Darius ruled over most of the known world at that time, most of what we now call Asia Minor, the Caucasus, the Balkans, Central Asia, even Egypt, North Africa. He had a massive empire and he himself traveled to the furthest east and the furthest west. And he led expeditions in, in his entire kingdom. And he fought against the Egyptians, he fought against the Chinese, he fought against or the, the people of that region, call them what you will, but he fought against all of these people. And what is interesting about Darius, unlike Cyrus and definitely unlike Alexander, Darius was a monotheist. In contrast to the people before him and after him, we know from the books of history that Darius was an ardent monotheist. He was a strict believer in one God. He was beloved to his people. He had the reputation of being uh, a just king. And we have records of Darius. We have inscriptions to this day of Darius in which he is saying, I am the king, you know, uh, Darius and whatnot. Uh, whom God has given power, whom 
God has bestowed power to. In other words, هذا رحمة من ربي. Literally, God has blessed me with this power. It is very rare to find an ancient king who basically, I mean, Fir'aun said, أنا ربكم الأعلى. Right? It is very rare to find an ancient king who is saying, look, I am a king, but the one above is the one who made me the king. He is the one who gave this to me. So, and, and by the way, there's also a, a very enigmatic inscription of Darius in which he is depicted as having two horns as well. So that kind of يعني, adds a little bit of, of, of spice you know, uh, to the uh, whole mix there that Darius seems to be a likely candidate. And he was an ardent believer. Now, some can say, for those of you who know your history, but Darius was a Zoroastrian. And we say, well, there was no Islam per se at this point in time. We're talking 2,000 years ago. And Z uh, 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 Darius believed in the one supreme God that they called Ahura Mazda. And that was their name for them, but it was one God that they believed in. So Allah knows best. We are not 100% sure in any case. And it is also possible that Fidul Qarnayn could be somebody in recorded history whom we don't know. But that seems a bit difficult to swallow for someone like me. But so those of you who wish to, they can do that. But uh, you, you have two main options in my opinion. Either it's one of these historic figures or it's pre-recorded history. But then the issue comes again to, to make the, the issue more enigmatic. Generally speaking, Quranic history is recorded history. Yani only Nuh and some are pre pre history. Otherwise, Ibrahim, Ismail, Ishaq, the rest of them, they're basically in the time frame that most civilization is known. So Allah Ta'ala knows best. In any case, Dhul Qarnayn is called Dhul Qarnayn according to our tradition, either because he had two streaks of white hair or because he wore a helmet with two horns and Darius is depicted as two horns or because he went to the east and the west. So the Qarn here is east and west. So the owner of the east and the uh, west. So this is the notion of Dhul Qarnayn. Now we're going to get to Ya'juj and Ma'juj. Before I talk about my own understandings and whatnot, let's see what else is mentioned. So this is Ya'juj and Ma'juj in the Quran. We don't have much about them other than they seem to be a race of savages. They seem to be a race that is barbaric. Killing, looting, plundering. And Dhul Qarnayn, who has never met them, is sympathetic that these people are bad. He just wants to build a wall to protect these strangers from Dhul Qarnayn.